left to go to Damascus. He, on the way to Damascus, uh, Jesus uh, 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 stopped him on the road, and uh, during the course of the events, he, uh, he trusted and believed who Jesus was. He went on into, uh, for three days in Damascus, Ananias came, the scales fell off, he was, uh, he was immediately able to see, and uh, then following that, he ate some bread, got uh, strength back, went out and preached, and then a day or two later, they dropped him down in a basket and he headed for Jerusalem. Well, that's not exactly the way it happened, okay, because Paul tells us about the events later on. You see, it says after many days. There was a lot of days involved in there, okay? There was a lot of things that were taking place and happening. Now, at the very beginning, as we began to look at these, we recognized that uh, some of those things weren't very quick. When we, uh, we recognized to begin with that as he was there in Damascus and uh, he got with the disciples as a result of what had took place with Ananias, he ate bread, he was, he was strengthened thereby, and he began to have fellowship with the disciples. That, uh, that part was exactly the way that we see it as we look in these. Then when we drop down and we began that after many days part, we need to look over in the book of Galatians and see what it is that Paul tells us about the events that took place. Paul said that at that particular time that he left Damascus, he went to Arabia, he spent time with the Lord, he spent time in silence, he spent time learning, and according to the way that he tells it, uh, there was probably some uh, three years involved in that part. Now, he had went out, he began to try to preach immediately, uh, but as a result of some of the things that was going on, he went uh, he went and he spent time alone with the Lord. And after that time, when he came back, he didn't go to Jerusalem immediately. He went to, he went to Arabia, and then he came back to Damascus. He preached in the synagogues. Uh, but the interesting thing, uh, when we began to look at this, is at the very start, as he be, first began as a Christian, as he first began to express what had happened and in his life, as he first began to preach Christ, because he, he made it very clear that that's the one thing that he did. He preached Christ from the very start. He preached Christ and him crucified. He said, I, I don't know anything else. That's what I know. I know Christ and him crucified. And, and in that, uh, he began to show them, because Paul was well learned and well versed in the Scriptures. He had sat at the feet of Gamaliel. He was, he had what in today's society would be considered a seminary degree. He had, he had a great deal of knowledge about the Word of God. He knew the books of Moses in detail. He had grown up with them. He had heard them in the synagogue. He had become uh, a Pharisee of Pharisees. He had become a person who was considered to be a a, uh, one of those that would keep the law above everything else. He was, uh, he was a man uh, with, uh, that had become an influential individual. He was, uh, he was a person of, uh, well, I mean, let's, let's consider for a moment the reality of who he really was. As Saul, uh, as the one who was trying to stop the spread of the gospel, as the one who was the persecutor of the church. As we look at that man, we recognize him as, uh, as a, a person of, uh, who saw himself as being uh, not only influential and, uh, and with power with the, very, with the high priest, with those who were in power in any, in any sense of the word. He was somewhat arrogant. He was someone who who believed himself to be a true follower of God in every sense of the word, and uh, and so when we look at when we look at Saul, uh, we see a different picture of him before he became a Christian than after he became a Christian. Now, looking at that, 
and come into this place, we recognize that as he went into synagogues, he went with a total different view than what he came to Damascus with. Okay? Suddenly, he recognized that all those scriptures he had learned and all those things that he had said at the feet of Gamaliel hearing and all of those words were actually about Christ. And he took those words and he began to expound about who Christ is, about what it was he was to do, about how those scriptures prophesied and told about everything, including his death and his burial and his resurrection. And in those synagogues, they began to look with wonder. They began to express, is not this the one? Is this somebody else? Is this really the one that came here for the purpose of getting rid of the church? And here he's saying the things uh, that he is. Now, you know, when we look at that and we recognize uh, that beginning uh, that he had with, with, uh, with the church, with having the fellowship with the church and everything that was a part of that, then we come uh, to the place where after many days were fulfilled, okay, when we do that, we've got to go to Galatians 1, and we've got to look at what it is that Paul tells us about his life at that particular point in order to be able to understand a little bit about it. Now, it's a, uh, it, it's a, it's a little bit difficult uh, without being able to take the Word and pull it together in this kind of way. Okay, we go to uh, the third chapter. Let's see, I believe it is. Oh, no, here it is. Okay, it's, um, okay. Let's, let's go to, um, um, verse 11, okay, in the first chapter of Galatians. If you have your Bible, it would be good for you to go there with me. It says, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached to me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, we're talking about the gospel now. Okay. For ye have heard of my conversion in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited it in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by His grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them that were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him fifteen days, and other of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write before you, I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. Lie not. Afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia. Now, okay, you see what I'm saying here is that during those many days, Paul took a trip in which he spent time alone with the Lord. He spent time learning. He spent time... Uh, determining all of these things by being taught by Jesus himself. And so after three years, he came back, he began to teach again in this way, and then following that, he was, uh, they wanted to kill him. They wanted to get rid of him. And it became known, and uh, different ones say it was known in a lot of different ways, one by those that happened to be in the inner circle in some way or another was able to let him know. Um, and others say that the Lord himself revealed it to Paul that those things were going to take place and that they were trying to do what they were doing. Uh, but here this, uh, uh, this one who arrogantly uh, tried to, who uh, found himself in powerful circles, uh, suddenly finds himself 
rather than in that kind of situation being let down out of a window in a basket. He was uh, uh, totally situated, the situation was totally different. He who persecuted now became the persecuted. He who was uh, trying to stop the church became the one that was that they were trying to stop. And after that, he went up to Jerusalem, and it said he is saved, which meant he tried in a number of ways to get with the disciples, but they didn't believe him. He, when he came uh, talking to them, they believed that in all likelihood he was just one who was uh, trying to uh, get in as a spy as one who was not what he claimed to be. And until Barnabas, you all know who Barnabas is, don't you? Barnabas was uh, that one that we talked about that was the son of consolation, that one who was uh, accepting of others when nobody else seemed to be, who came and what, for however he did it, he spent time with Paul, and recognized that Paul, what Paul said was the truth, that Jesus had indeed changed Paul's life, and so he took him to the, to the apostles. Now, from everything we can gather, when he took him to the apostles, we're talking about James and John. He took him to those that were the ones that were uh, uh, the pillars in the church in Jerusalem, uh, we don't know where all the rest of the apostles were at that particular point in time, but uh, Peter he stayed with for 15 days, and James, the Lord's brother, the other James, probably since we're looking at, at uh, three years later, had actually uh, been uh, uh, beheaded, so John's brother was not there anymore, okay? The James is there, his the Lord's brother. James is there is the one that book, wrote the book of James. James is there is one of those four brothers that it mentions back over in the Gospels when it speaks about James and Joseph and Judas and uh, and I forgot the other one's name. Uh, but in all of those, uh, we see that. And when we go back over here uh, to the book of Galatians, uh, uh, then we see a couple of other things that it speaks about. It says, and they glorified God in me, okay? But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preached the faith which once he destroyed, and they glorified God in me. Then it says, then 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me. So you see, there's a lot of years and a lot of things that are taking place in the life of this individual. Uh, Saul, while he preached and while he confounded uh, those that were in the synagogues, when he went to Jerusalem and he began to, to he, it looks like uh, from every indication that he went back to those uh, uh, Hellenistic uh, Jews in the synagogues there in Jerusalem, the ones that were a part of the group that ended up stoning Stephen to death that he was involved with. It looks like he went back and tried to make a difference in their life and tried to make them understand that Jesus was indeed the Christ. And instead of accepting his word or anything that had to do with that because they had known him before, you know it's hard when somebody knew you back when, okay? Sometimes it's hard when uh, people uh, were there with you when you weren't a Christian, okay? Now, you know, uh, uh, the reality is that I've spoken with so many different people that, uh, that had went out carousing and drinking and doing all those things with their friends, and then when they went back later to try to talk to their friends, their friends said, hey, I know you. And they weren't often willing uh, to accept the word. And, uh, but there are those that do. There are those that accept. There are those that believe. And, and the reality is that sometimes in certain circumstances and situations, 
that person can affect lives better because they see the difference in that life. And they know there's a difference. Well, they knew there was a difference in Paul, but that difference uh, was one that they hated because they hated his message and they hated the thought and they, and they were ready to kill him. And so according to the way the scripture goes here, uh, the disciples seeing the circumstances the way they were, they took him and, uh, and according to the way that it reads, uh, it says that, that uh, um, and when he was, uh, let's see, which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. Tarsus was where he was from. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. So basically it says that some of the persecution wasn't quite as heavy. It doesn't mean it stopped. It doesn't mean there wasn't any, but it does mean that, uh, that following all of these things, uh, the church was able to grow without having to deal with with Saul, basically. Because he was the one that was giving him all that trouble to begin with. Uh, but in this, uh, you know, there are a lot of things that are, are difficult unless you take all the scriptures and bring them together and, and do as it says in one scripture. It says rightly dividing the word of truth. Finding those scriptures that speak about each of these things pull them together to kind of get a picture of how it is that God moved in the church to bring about souls being saved. And one of the ways was he took an enemy and he made him a friend. Now, you know, uh, that's, a, that's an old saying, but it's a good one. What's the best way to get rid of an enemy? Make him your friend. Uh, and uh, certainly uh, uh, that was what took place here. Because, uh, but Paul, uh, all the things that Paul did, uh, we see coming up in Paul's own life as he, uh, as he suffers the persecution, as he, as he suffers for the cause of Christ everywhere he goes. Uh, but everywhere he goes, God blesses, God multiplies the church, God brings about uh, uh, bodies of believers that that began to spread the gospel throughout all the world. And uh, that's, uh, that's the beautiful thing about all of this. Now, uh, these are uh, 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 several things. Uh, I'm not going to go into the rest of the chapter because it has to do with Peter and a number of things that uh, that he did uh, following these things. Uh, you know, Paul's life was, uh, uh, you know, we, we, get, we get a good picture of it as we go through the whole thing. Uh, you know, uh, we see his conversion, uh, his first ministry in Damascus, his time alone with God in Arabia, and his second trip to uh, Damascus, his trip, first trip to uh, Jerusalem, his ministry in and around Tarsus, lasting uh, at somewhere around 11 years anyway, and uh, then uh, his call uh, by Barnabas to help him minister in Antioch, which we're going to look at, the Lord will, in the 11th chapter of him will, and uh, his call and commissioning as a missionary, his, his uh, mission to the Gentiles in Cyprus, and Galatia, and, and um, uh, after all of the missionary journeys, coming back at least twice to Antioch, and and, um, and all of the things that he did until he finally became a prisoner in Rome. And we read about all of those things as we study and, and go through uh, the book of Acts. Uh, God used him greatly in, uh, in a lot of different ways. Uh, he certainly changed his life uh, so completely. But he changes everyone's life that he, that he touches. When you come in contact with Christ, Things are different. That's just the way it is. Uh, 